Glad to have you all out this morning. <coughs> As you can see, I'm probably not going to be up there for a while until we get that situation handled. Because it restricts my mood. You do you. <laughs> this morning, our topic is, as you can see, who is a Christian? Or what is, however you want to pose the question, what is a Christian? Oftentimes you hear people often classify themselves as Christians based off simple, well, I believe that Jesus is Lord, so I'm a Christian. Or I just say I'm a Christian just because I can say I'm a Christian and I believe I am. But I want us to look at this morning, I also want to say this before I go any further on that. Just because you have been baptized, just because you come and sit in a pew, just because you sing and pray and take the Lord's Supper, that's not what makes you a Christian either. That it goes deeper than that. Amen? Amen. It goes deeper. <coughs> the name Christian, we're going to do a little different than what I normally would, but the name Christian comes from the word, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Christian notes or nos, however you want to look at it. And it, in our terms, it means an adherent of Jesus or a follower of Christ. According to the Expository Dictionary and the Thayer's Greek Lexicon. It is composed of the word Christ plus the suffix in many of belonging to. So I want us to understand this this morning. If you look at the word Christ, which is the root word, and then your suffix at the end, I-A-N, right? Meaning it belongs, it shows ownership, right? It belongs. So if we are Christians, we belong to Christ. We belong to to Christ. The word Christian appears only, oh, it's going to be a question, how many times in the Bible? Somebody said it. Who said it? Somebody said it again. Three. Three, yes. Three times in Scripture. Acts chapter 11 and verse number 26. Let's start there. Acts chapter 11 and verse number 26. And this is dealing with Paul. Uh, Paul. Barnabas and Saul in Antioch here, and he says, uh, uh, back up to verse 25, then uh, Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So before they were known as Disciples, and then they were first called Christians in Antioch. So before they were just simple followers of Christ, and then you're Christians, not only just followers of Christ, but they belong to Christ. In, in uh, ver Acts chapter 26 and verse number 28, we're going to be moving around a little bit today. Acts chapter 26 and verse number 28. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuaded me to become a, a Christian. You almost persuaded me to become one who belongs to Christ, right? One who is in the body of Christ. And then 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 16. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 16. The Bible says, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. If anyone suffers as a Christian, one belonging to Christ. I want you to notice something. Every time this word is used in these three passages, 
Is it used as a noun or as an adjective? It's used as a noun. You belong a Christian. It is a noun. You belong to Christ. It's not descriptive. You belong to Christ. Here's something to think about. I want you to think about. What about when we call places a Christian church, a Christian school, a Christian this or a Christian that? That is a descriptive term, right? Huh. When we discuss that, when we look at that and we use that term in that manner, I don't find it used in that manner in Scripture. But the way that I find it used is as a noun. If I say it's a Christian school or a Christian uh, uh, church or a nation, whatever, that is a descriptive term. How often have we said, or we heard people say, where we are, the America is a Christian nation. Folks, we have an issue when we just put everybody under the same umbrella and we say that, oh, America is a Christian nation. Here's the issue. If America is a Christian nation, why are we not standing on the Bible and living as Christians ought to live? You see, that Christian, not everybody has the right. Let me take that back. Yeah, not everybody has the right to call themselves a Christian. They all have the same opportunity to be a Christian, but that name, that word, is for those who are who belong to Christ, and that ought to be precious to us. Amen? Amen. That ought to be precious to those who are truly Christians. It's like this. Somebody goes and robs a bank and uses your name. Cops come find you just because, I know it's not how this works, but it's just because they use your name, you're the one that gets punished for it. How are you going to feel for that? You're not going to like it because you didn't commit the crime, but somebody drugged your name name through the mud, right? Do we think that way when it comes to Christians? We belong to Christ. That's something that is precious to us. Am I making sense to you this morning? That's something that is precious to us. That we have that those who claim to be Christians do not have a right to have. And those who just because you sit in a church pew does not give you the right if you're not faithful to the name. If you're not obedient to it. And so I want us to look at this point number one. A Christian is a disciple of Christ. We just looked at that in Acts chapter 11 and verse number 26. A disciple, the Greek word there is mathetes, it is a learner, an adherent, a follower. Jesus said in John chapter, uh, yeah, John chapter 8, verse number 31, if you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciple, okay? John 8, 31, if you abide, that, that word that if you abide, that word if, that means there is a condition, right? It is conditional. If you abide. Only then are you my disciples, right? Only then. See, a Christian is a disciple of Christ. He's a follower. He abides. A Christian is one who continues in the teaching of Christ. Second John 9, right? Second John 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and 
the Son. A Christian is one who abides in the doctrine. If you don't abide in the doctrine, you are not a disciple, right? You can't be a disciple because Christ followed what his father taught him, did he not? What his father sent him to do. And a Christian means belonging to or a disciple following up. And if we are that disciple, then we are following the teachings of Christ. We are abiding in the doctrine. A Christian, that term is not a term to be used as loosely as we use it. Amen. Y'all quiet this morning. That term is used entirely too loosely. Because nowadays everybody is Christian as long as they say, I believe Jesus is real. Is that what the Bible says a Christian is? Just one who professes that Jesus is real? Or that they believe in Christ? No, the Bible says that person is a follower of his doctrine. He's a follower. He or she is a follower. Amen? Amen. Well, y'all quiet. He's a follower. Here's another name you might want to use for it. Disciples of the Lord were also called saints. You ever heard somebody say this? Well, I ain't no saint. Oh, yeah. Because that term has been taken out of context and has been used wrongly. People say, when they say, well, I, you know, I go to church and I do this, but I ain't no saint. What did you just say? You're not a Christian. <laughs> what did you just say, Miss Judy? You're not a Christian. If you just said, I'm no saint, you're saying, I don't belong to Christ. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse number 1. Well, I should have had readers for all these scriptures, many scriptures like that. <laughs> 9, 1, and, and, and 13. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest against the disciples of the Lord, those who follow Christ, those Christians, those saints, right? And he goes and drop down to verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, answered, Lord, I have heard from many but about this man. How much harm has he done to your saints? But I ain't no saint. What did he call him here? To your saints in Jerusalem. <clears throat> Where did the church start? Huh? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Which means Christians started where? Jerusalem. And he said, to your saints in Jerusalem, to your disciples, to your Christians in Jerusalem. It's also in Acts chapter 26 and verse number 10. The word saints. Y'all going to get some Greek from me today. Please correct me if I say this wrong. Hagios. Hagios, however you want to say it. I know it doesn't matter. It's here. <laughs> it is here. If you use the bubbles. Set. Apart for God. Which brings me to another term. Christians are not only disciples and Christians, they are saints, which brings me to another term, which means that the word hagias set apart, which means they are sanctified, which means they are holy. Holy. It's amazing how much the Greek will help you out. It means they are holy people. First Peter chapter 1 and verse number 16, the Bible says, Be ye holy. Huh? Somebody's done their homework. For I am holy. We're to be 
holy people, church. Be ye holy, for I am holy. He also said that in Leviticus, did he not? Be ye holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Christians are holy people. Have you ever heard somebody, oh, I don't want to be around them holy rollers? It's sad when Christians say that about other Christians. That's too holy for me. If you can say that about your brothers and sisters in Christ, that means, guess what? You don't understand Christianity yourself. You don't understand what you've been called to be. Am I right about it? You don't understand what you've been called to be. John chapter 17, verse number 17. Set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. I know I use set you apart. It says sanctify them, but I'm making it simple for you. Set them apart. Make them holy. Right? Make them holy. Sanctify. We're set apart for God. That is what a Christian is. They have been called out of darkness. Church, we have been called out of darkness into light. What is a Christian one who's been called out of darkness? Into the marvelous light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 12. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 12. Giving thanks to the funding back there. Starting in verse 9, for this reason we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to ask you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge. I just went over this Wednesday night. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy. That's holding the church. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Did it say partially pleasing God? Fully. Fully pleasing him. That means I don't get to decide when I want to be a Christian. That means I don't get to decide when I want to be obedient to him. He goes on, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. That means, hey, Christianity requires growth. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the uh, Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Now, I don't know about you, but I will say this. I am glad that he has qualified me to be a partaker of the saints. There's a song, I believe it's in our songbook, Oh, when the what goes marching in? So if you're not a saint, where are you going to be marching? <laughs> <Huh, Joe? laughs> you're not going to be marching. You might be marching, but it won't be where you want to be going. <laughs> when the, you know, I just thought about that song. That wouldn't have been my, my lesson. But when the saints go marching in. Oh, how I want to be in that number. Do you really want to be in that number? If we, don't, if we don't consider ourselves to be saints and to be faithful saints, then you don't have to worry about being in that number. You'll be in a number, but it won't be the number you want to be in, I can assure you. I want to be in that number where the Bible speaks about where there's only going to be a few that find it. I want to be in that few. I don't want the broad path. I want the narrow path. I may not be a narrow person, but I want the narrow path. I squeeze in there if I have to. I want, I want on that narrow road. Amen? Amen? That's where I want to be. We have been called out of darkness. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. But you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness 
into his marvelous light. We've been called out, church. Here's the thing I want to say too. Not only is it the not only is a Christian a disciple of Christ, not only is a Christian a saint, a Christian is also a believer. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. A Christian is also a believer. That word believer there, the Greek word is pestuo. pestuo. It means this. To be persuaded of, to place confidence in, to trust, rely upon. Acts chapter 22 and verse number 19. In that scripture, it shows this or refers to this term as a conviction full of joyful trust that Jesus is the Messiah conjoined with, did you hear? I'm not leaving it out. Conjoined with is not just simple understanding or trust or belief. It's conjoined with obedience. A believer is an obedient person. If you believe, then you obey. Is that not what Mark chapter 16 and verse number 16 said? Now verse number 15 and 16, go ye out and talk the word and preach the gospel. He that believes and there's a conjunction there. And it is baptized. Shall be saved. A believer is one who acts upon what he believes. One who is obedient to it. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6. For without faith it is impossible to please God. He that wishes to come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. That's who God is going to reward. That believer who diligently seeks him. But you go, you run into people all the time that will say, I'm a believer. I believe Christ. Okay, but you have to understand that term belief, you have to define your term. If we're just going to say, I believe, and think that's okay just to say, I believe in Christ, but no action behind it, we can't consider ourselves Christian. We can't consider ourselves a disciple. We can't consider ourselves saints. We can't consider ourselves believers. Am I keeping it plain enough for you? In order for us to do all that, church, we have to be obedient to uphold the, the, the name we've been given and who we belong to. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 26 and 27. Galatians 3, 26, 27. A Christian is one who is who has believed and has been baptized into Christ. Galatians 3, 26, 27 says, For you are all sons of God. There's another term. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We are Christians. Listen to this. For as many of you have been baptized into 
two. Into Christ. Have put on Christ. You can now wear Christian. Christ belong. You baptized into Christ. You are now in his what? You're in his body. You're in his body. You are a part. I want you to get this picture. If this could really happen, but get this picture. Use your imagination. Imagine Christ dying on the cross. Imagine you being nailed on the cross with him and your body doing, your body melting, molding, or melting into it, joining in with his. Joining in with his. You're buried with his body. <clears throat> You're raised with his body. Now I got a question for you. Romans chapter 6 will say that you died to sin. How can you who died to sin live any longer in it? If we have been baptized into Christ, means you died with Christ. You rose with Christ to walk in newness. That's what Romans chapter 6 and verse number 4 says. To walk in newness of life. That means, guess what people? Change had to take place. Amen? Amen, amen. Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20, it is no longer I who lives but Christ who lives in me. He has taken over my life. Am I making sense to you this morning? Yes. He has taken over my life. So if I'm going to be faithful to the name that I have been given, I need to treat it with the utmost respect. Would you agree? Just stop, when you think about that, just stop and think and take it back to the cross. Church, that's something we have been given that everybody do, does not have. We ought to treat it as such, we ought to treat it as, as precious and with the utmost reverence that we can. A believer is one who acts upon what they believe. I should say a baptized believer. That'll set you apart. That's what a Christian is, a baptized believer. For people who say, well, I don't have to be baptized to be a Christian. What does the Bible say? <laughs> it's not my words. That's scripture, is it not? Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. Oh, verse number 36, men and brethren, what shall we do, right? You know, what shall we do? We just crucified Christ. He says, repent and be baptized. be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 and 16. He that believes <laughs> and is baptized. Uh, 1 Peter chapter Three and verse number twenty-one. For baptism is an antitype, which also doeth not save us. It, whoa, here we go, type and antitype. Baptism is an antitype, which means it is the original; it is not the copy. Which also doeth not save us. Romans chapter six, verses one through four. Galatians chapter three, verse twenty-six and twenty-seven. That's what a Christian is. So when people say, I'm a Christian, but I don't like to be baptized, I got news for you. We need to check scripture. Not what you want to believe, check scripture. Because this is merely not my words. Whose words are they? God's. They're God's. So you can't argue with the preacher. I mean, you can. Mm -hmm. 
But it's not me you're arguing with, you're arguing with God. Because that's what he said. Disciples, saints, and believers are in the way. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me say that again. Disciples, saints, and believers, Christians, are in the singular way. John chapter 14 and verse number 6, Jesus says, I am Some Bibles, there are some messed up Bibles that say he is a way. What does the script? He is the way. The truth. And the, those are definite articles, church. Definite. Not a maybe, not an if. Definite. <clears throat> Acts chapter 9 and verse number 2. Let me go back there. Acts 9 and verse number 2. And Larry, if you would, get Acts 22 number four, verse 4 and hold it for me. Acts 9 and verse number 2. Back up to verse number 1. Again, this all still breathed threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord. We went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus. This is when Saul is doing what? He persecuted who? Christians. And he goes on and he says, and has letters from him to the synagogue of Damascus so that, uh, so that if he found any who were of a way. Huh? Who were of, see, even Saul, before he became Paul, right? Even Saul, before he became Paul, Paul understood somewhat, I'm not going to say fully because otherwise he wouldn't have been persecuting Christians, but understood of the way. But Paul thought he, Saul thought he was doing what was right. Did he not? Mm -hmm. He wholeheartedly thought. He said, I've done all things in good conscience up until now. But he said, of the way. That way is important, church. We can't just use Christian to say, I'm a Christian loosely. There's too many people doing that. I'm afraid there are too many people that, 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 that call themselves Christians. I'm going to say this. Just because they go to a church of Christ, that don't understand what a Christian is. We must understand what a Christian is. Which means we must take it seriously. Are you in Acts chapter 22 and verse number 4? Three. I persecuted this way oh. to, to the death, binding and putting both men and women into prison. What way is he talking about? What way is Saul talking about? Jesus. I persecuted this way. Those who were following Christ, right? I'm persecuting the way. This way, those who are following that way. That's what Saul was saying. I'm persecuting those who are following Christ Jesus. We have to understand, church, there is only one way. That word way there is called is, is hadas. Is used metaphorically of the course followed and characterized by the followers of Christ. Jesus said, I already went over that, John 14 and 6, a Christian is in the way that leadeth unto life. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 13 and 14. That's where a Christian is. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 21, we know that through following. A Christian is one like everyone that, that does the will of the Father, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. 
See, this is the problem that we have. Amen? Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter to the kingdom of heaven, but who will? He who does, he who does, excuse me, the will of my Father who is in heaven. One who abides in the doctrine. That's obeying the will of the Father. Amen? One who has been baptized, right? For the right reason. That is a follower of Christ. That is one who is obeying the will of the Father, who is abiding in the doctrine, right? One who has changed. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Before I get to Romans 12, Romans chapter 6. Verses 1 through 4. He says, you died. That old body, that old man, he would say later on down, that you buried that old man, right? And that you were raised like Christ. Am I right about it? That you were raised like Christ. That means, church, if you are going to call yourself a Christian, you leave that old person alone. Amen. You have changed. You cannot be the same person that you were before you obeyed the gospel and called yourself a Christian. Because if you do that, all you've done was play in water. Now I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What does that mean? That means I died to self, right? A living sacrifice. God first in everything. Holy, set apart for God's purposes. My life is here. And acceptable. That means on his terms. Amen? Amen? Not on mine. On his terms. Which is your reasonable service. Why is this so reasonable, God? Because I gave my son for you. I'm offering you a new life. I'm offering you a, a, a I'm offering you eternal life. That's why I free Paul. Give up self. Is that not what, what the book of Luke, I believe, chapter 14 or 16, I can't remember off the top of my head. But is that not what discipleship means? Counting the cost? Jesus says that we need to take up our cross and do it how often? Daily. But before I take up my cross, what must I do? Deny myself. That's the cost of being a Christian. What else is the cost? He said, if you love father, brother, mother, sister more than me, you're not worthy of me. You cannot be my disciple. In other terms, you are not a Christian if you put family before God. Being a Christian church is serious. It is very serious. I think sometimes we take it for granted. Because we come in here, we sing, we, we, we have Bible class, we pray, we discuss things with each other, we have lessons and all this, and we sometimes think that's the extent of our Christianity. And I'm saying we, not just here, but in general. We sometimes think that's the extent of our Christianity, and so then we do what? We separate, or as humans like to do, we like to compartmentalize. Hmm. 
Do we not? We like to compartmentalize. And we take, oh, I'm a Christian right now, but then I have a separate life over here. You can't do that as a Christian and be and call yourself a Christian. Can you? No. You can't do that. You signed up to be, I said signed up, you, si you signed up to be a Christian. That means a lifetime commitment. That means a lifetime commitment. Not that I can be a Christian when I want to be or when I decide to be. Mm -hmm. Because those who decide, I mean, those who are faithful in their lifetime commitment are in the way. They're the ones who are obedient believers. Amen? Mm -hmm. Disciples, saints, believers, and believers are not only in the way, they are also in the church of God. Notice I didn't say church of Christ, although I could have said that. But I'm going to say this before I go any further with that. Just because you have church of Christ on the building, I want to address this now. Just because you have church of Christ on the building, I don't care. You can have church Christ on that building. But if you're not doing what the Bible says, you cannot claim to be the church that belongs to Christ. I'm not saying the name isn't important. I'm saying just because it's there, if it's there, we had better be living up to it. Those who are Christians are in the body of Christ. There is only how many? How many bodies does Christ have? One. 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 So anybody outside of that body is sad to say, but is not a Christian. Is not a Christian. How do I know that? Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 and 3. Now Saul was consenting to his death at the time a great persecution arose against the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of, of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. As for Saul, verse 3, he made havoc of the church. Is that singular or plural? Singular. Of the church. Entering every house. And dragging <coughs> off men and women, committing them to prison. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18. What, what did Jesus say? Well, he asked Peter. Before, who do men say that I am? Some say you're a prophet. Some say you're this person. Some say you're that. Well, Peter, who do you say that I am? <coughs> what does Peter answer? <coughs> Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, Peter, upon this rock, upon your confession, Peter, upon this rock, who is our rock? Who is our firm foundation? Christ. Who is that uh, cornerstone, that rejected cornerstone? Christ. So he says, up on this rock, I'm going to build my churches. Church, church. He was singular in his, what, what he said. Am I right about it? <coughs> his church is, why do you say that? How do you know that? Well, go to Colossians chapter 1 for me. Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse number 18. Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse number 18, says, And he is the head 
of the body. Now we already we already did, we've already uh, established that there is only one body. That's what Ephesians chapter four says, right? <clears throat> that there is one body. So it says there's one body. We've established that. The church. The church. They're not my words. Who's are they? Scriptures. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things he may have the preeminence, or that he may have the first place. We discussed that. Drop down to verse number 24 in the same chapter. And he says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you, Paul speaking, and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of his body. Shows ownership, doesn't it? His body, which is the church, it shows ownership. And if a Christian belongs, if we belong to Christ, then where are we? Am I making church. sense to you? We're where? In Christ, in the church. <laughs> I can't make it no simpler, can I? One plus one equals two. Simple. We're in his body. Which is the church. That's where Christians are. The church, <coughs> the ecclesia, which means the called out. You've been called out from among the world, right? That's why you're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation. And holy, set apart. You're different. Christians, we have to learn to be different. But too often, we want to fit in with our peers. We want to fit in with the crowd. When I'm around these certain group of people, I want to hang out and do what they do. But when I'm around Christian people, I do what they do. That's straddling the fence. Mm -hmm. We can't do what everybody else in the world does. We can't do that. So I ask you again. By what we've covered this morning, who is a Christian? Believers. Are you a Christian here on this morning? Because we went over it already. You can't be a part-time Christian. You can't be part-time. You can't straddle the fence. <clears throat> Don't deceive yourself into thinking that it's okay for me to sin sometimes. It's okay. As long as I don't do it all the time, it's okay. There's a difference in willful sinning and slipping up. Is there not? I believe Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 26 says, For if we sin willfully, there no longer remains a sacrifice for our sin. Do we really understand the depth of that? It's okay, God, you know, I can commit this sin. God will forgive me. <clears throat> Church, that's not living in the way. Like I said, it's one thing to slip up. It's another thing to willfully 
and you know better. It's another thing to willfully go out and commit or premeditate. So in my class this morning, it's kind of like premeditated murder, right? <coughs> you can't get before a judge once you premeditated this, and they found out you premeditated this, and you can't get before a judge and say, I plead in sin. On the day of judgment, you won't be able to stand before God and say, God, I plead in sanity. I just didn't know how to be faithful to you. You think that's going to work? Well, God, I understood what you wanted me to do. I understood you wanted me to be a Christian, but I just wasn't ready to give up the world yet. I just wasn't ready to give up that life yet. Here's the problem. If you weren't ready to give up that life, then why did you claim you obeyed the gospel to begin with? <clears throat> now, I understand people stumble. Am I right? Mm -hmm. As I said before, I want you to know there's a difference. But if I'm still living the way I was before I became a Christian, then I was not. And you may get mad at me for saying this, that's fine. Then I was not converted. Because see, we often do this. We want you to hurry up and get baptized. Right? Mm -hmm. We fight so hard against once saved, always saved, but we teach once baptized, always saved, it seems like. We may not say it, but our actions show it. Repent and be ye converted. That means make a change. You are a different person. You cannot be, I can't stress this enough. You cannot be a Christian if you are the same person doing the same things you were doing before you obeyed the gospel. But here's the, here's the deal. If you have any doubt whether you are truly where you need to be, whether you truly obeyed the gospel, if you have any doubt, don't leave here this morning with that doubt in your mind. Don't leave here this morning with that doubt in your mind. Be baptized properly for the right reasons and truly understand that I'm giving up self to live for Christ. Don't just think because I've been baptized once and if you didn't do it for the right reason, once again, all you did was play in the water. That's all you did. And there's only one reason, am I right? According to Acts chapter 2. For the remission of sins. <coughs> And then and only then will the Lord add you. Verse 47. Add you to his body. If you're not a member of the Lord's body, then you're not a Christian. The Bible says in Ephesians 1 3, all spiritual blessings are in Christ Jesus. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? You've heard it. All you got to do is be a believer. Become a believer on this morning. Not just one who says with the mouth they believe, or they feel they believe, but one who acts upon what they believe. The opportunity is yours. If you have any need, please come now. While together we stand and while we sing.